How do you import a car? This is a question that a lot of people are starting to ask now because a lot of these American and Japanese cars are becoming quite a bit rarer and to find them in a really good condition at least is very difficult or just to find the car you want is very difficult. So today I'm going to outline several ways that you could import a car and why it's actually probably easier than you think nowadays and it's not actually a situation where you have to really go looking but I will explain that in the video. Hope you enjoy this. I'm Cars with Ben. Let's do it. I'm going to talk about the first way and there's going to be a couple of ways to do this. You could actually import it yourself. Now, this is going to mean quite a headache for yourself if you do decide to go down this route because although it might be cheaper and several reasons why you might want to do it in terms of where you're based in the world or perhaps you have wanted a car that you can only get hold of if you did it yourself, there are certain issues with this that, let's be honest, are going to cause you more of a headache. And frankly, firstly, the one number one would be you are going to have to possibly even go to the country yourself, check out the car, whether it's America or Europe or Japan, and just have a look at the car itself. You're not going to have an independent person to do that. You're going to have to catch a flight over there potentially, which could be quite expensive in terms of maybe a thousand pounds if you went from the UK to Japan. And then you might get something that doesn't work very well or it wasn't quite what was advertised on the picture. And you could end up with a range of different vehicles that just wasn't one you wanted. And it could even be a write-off. So there's a number of reasons why it could be particularly worse. And then when you test drive it, does it start? That sort of thing. You're not getting a reputable garage owner or someone to give you that idea of how it works. And it's interesting to know that a lot of the cars imported now are from specific companies, so it's worth checking out separately. Obviously, if you want your dream JDM car, keep watching this video because there is a bit more I want to talk about in terms of the second option, and it might change your mind. So, if you decided to go for option two, well done, because this is the way that everyone is doing it nowadays. And you can go through several different websites where their people will do it for you. The hard work is actually done, and it makes it so much easier. Now, here's a little collection of cars, and I found this one on Instagram called Gorilla Imports. They will do all the importing and fees for you. You just have to pick the car, bid on it, and then that's that. Pretty much, in most cases, they will literally do everything for you. Here's a picture of what you'll actually see before you bid on the car. So, it'll say all the specifications, sometimes in Japanese, depending if you're going for Japan or if you wanted to check out a whole bunch of stock first you can see what it's going to look like whether it works whether the engine works how much damage there is and there's quite a lot of selection again another one here being rising sun imports and i found that this one was really cool as well there's just so many versions and great reviews now shipping wise you'll have a look at shipping which usually takes about a few months potentially and at the end of it of course you'll get a cool thing like this a really rare evo and we all want to look like we're drifting in Tokyo Drift because I think that's the sort of end goal here for most people or do you want to be doing drag races on the strip in an American car so there's different versions that you can go for here and it comes from which country you're going to go for are you going to go for something quirky or are you going to go for something more American and depending on where you come from it could be different now fees generally speaking will be roughly about the same whichever country you go for because both are being shipped and shipping fees typically cost anywhere over a thousand pounds but I actually do believe this is worth it one thing to bear in mind here is that shipping or importing a car is not a cheap method in any sense don't think you're getting any good deals here unless maybe the car was cheaper over there by quite a significant amount you're doing this because you want the car and i think it's worth to note that it's really really it changes depending on how you go for it so coming to how do i import it and what is it all about well you can go on the government website and check out how it, it works and of course it will be on a ship for many months depending on if it's from japan if it's from america it might be a little bit less and here's an actual picture i found of how much it actually costs as you can see the costs really total up to maybe two and a half thousand pounds once you've it's all said and done and that's after the car is picked this will obviously include taxes fees and any registrations that need to be included from the courier and not including the actual shipping fees themselves so you could be looking at around two thousand pounds plus and then of course it'll be stored in a british garage somewhere like this for a little bit until the dvla are ready to tax it and they are happy with the vehicle you have bought and inspected and then well done you have got your car in a in the uk in a british garage and finally home and hopefully you really enjoy it for years to come. And don't forget, it actually might raise in value as well because you've imported something really special if you can do it right way. Hope you've enjoyed today's video, everyone. I make weekly car content. And let me know if you want me to make more car content like this. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you all in the next one.